Your Royal Highness, Your Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, it is a pleasure to have the opportunity to speak to you today. Allow me to begin by thanking my dear colleague, the OPEC Secretary General Haytham al Ghais, along with the organizing committee of the International Seminar for their invitation to address this very important gathering of energy producers and consumers. Let me also express my gratitude to OPEC for the essential role they play in balancing energy markets, promoting global prosperity, and advancing the goals of sustainable development. And allow me to thank OPEC for their strong support of the COP28 Presidency. The theme of this year's seminar, Towards a Sustainable and Inclusive Energy Transition, is one of the most complex issues we collectively face. The science is telling us that we have just seven years to make a 43% reduction in carbon emissions to keep the aspiration of 1.5 degrees Celsius within reach. In the same time frame, energy demand will only increase as an additional half a billion people join our planet. And according to the most recent OPEC data, as economies continue to grow, energy demand will increase 23% by 2045. Therefore, the critical challenge of this century is to dramatically reduce emissions while maintaining robust, sustainable development. And here, we are talking about a system-wide transformation of entire economies. This is a political challenge. It is an economic challenge. It is a social challenge. And of course, it is an engineering challenge. That is why I am so focused on COP28 being truly inclusive, and I mean inclusive to the fullest extent. We must leverage the skills, the project management experience, the project finance expertise, and the technological know-how of all relevant industries, including the oil and gas industry. We will only succeed if everyone who can make a positive difference is involved in solving the problem, and I mean everyone. And to get there, we need to rapidly build a new clean energy system while comprehensively decarbonizing the system we rely on today. Earlier this year, I called in the oil and gas industry to up its game, urgently decarbonize its operations, and take collective action to eliminate operational emissions based on three imperatives. First, the entire industry, IOCs and NOCs, should be aligned to achieve net zero by or before 2050. Second, we need to accelerate an industry-wide commitment to reach near zero methane emissions by 2030. If we do this, that takes care of a massive proportion of scope one and two emissions. Third, we must monitor, measure, and validate progress every step of the way. And today, I would like to add a fourth imperative, and that is allocating capital at scale to clean energy solutions, because the energy system of the future will not and cannot build itself. There isn't one-size-fits-all prescription for this, but we can all make a positive difference, especially when it comes to helping to decarbonize heavy-emitting sectors, the hardest to abate scope 3 emissions. Building a new energy system can only happen at speed and scale with united action on the supply and the demand side together. When it comes to supply, we need to massively scale up clean energies by 2030. Triple renewable capacity to 11,000 gigawatt and double hydrogen production to 180 million tons. And as I said in Bonn, the phase down of fossil fuels is inevitable. It is in fact essential, but it cannot be irresponsible. We must manage this transition, ensuring energy security accessibility, 
and affordability while also sustaining socio-economic development. The speed of the transition will be driven by how quickly we phase out zero carbon alternatives. It will also depend on strong demand signals. We need a holistic, integrated ecosystem that connects policy, technology, finance, and people. Policies at the national level must set the direction. Every country must look at updating their NDCs to accelerate 2030 trajectories in line with net zero by 2050. The UAE just submitted a third update to its second NDC that pushes emission reductions to 40% compared to business as usual. That's an almost 10% improvement on the previous disclosure measured against 2019 baselines. At the same time, we have announced a $54 billion capital investment program over the next seven years to triple renewable and clean energy capacity, significantly expand our hydrogen production, and completely phase out coal from our energy mix. I urge all countries to update their commitments as aggressively as possible. Government policies at the national and subnational level need to stimulate adoption of clean energies, commercialize the hydrogen value chain, make carbon capture viable and affordable, and incentivize R&D and battery storage, energy efficiencies, and other new technologies. We all know that applying those new technologies rapidly and at scale will require finance and lots of capital. Last year, a record of $1.5 trillion was invested in clean technologies, but that's only one-third of the investment needed to drive the transitions we need. And finally, a critical success factor is people. We need capacity building and skills development to train young people for the jobs of the future because we must deliver climate action and economic opportunity at the same time. We must hold back emissions, not progress, and we must build the new energy system before we unplug the energy system of today. Friends and colleagues, the energy transition represents the greatest leap in social and economic development since the first industrial age. It represents a massive opportunity for this industry to redefine its future and contribute to the future of humanity. And just as this industry lifted millions out of poverty and created sustainable prosperity in the past, I know it can do so again. For too long, this industry has been viewed by some as part of the problem. Now is the time to step up, flip the script, and show the world once more how essential this industry is to the solutions we need. So I invite you to use your resources, your experience, your knowledge, and your skills to help humanity build a bridge to a brighter future. Thank you.